Hello everyone, and welcome to the official Full Throttle Alchemist launch version spotlight. I'm the mod creator, Blue Dart, and I'm going to walk you through FDA as best I can. Now you may be familiar with a old mod called Dartcraft. That was the old mod that I used to make for 164. I actually had to remake this one from scratch, and it took a while. But it's finally here. So let's start with the clipboard. The clipboard's back, and it's still just six wood one iron ingot, and two paper. You could still right-click it to open it, or press C while it's on your hotbar to open it, and it's just a crafting table that allows you to keep its inventory when you close and reopen it. In addition, it also has a balance button, which will balance all of the items inside the clipboard. It has a return to inventory feature, which will attempt to return all of the items back to your inventory, and it also has a rotate function, which will both rotate everything in a circular pattern and balance. So you can do something like make a chest very quickly. In addition, for those times when you don't have a clipboard yet, when you make your first crafting table, if you have the crafting table selected on your hotbar and you press the clipboard hotkey, it will actually open a standard vanilla crafting table and you simply don't have to place it down. On the subject of items you can get right from the start, let's talk about this new thing, the super leaf. Super leaves will actually drop from any type of leaves, whether you punch them or they break naturally. These do not stack, and what you do with these is you simply eat them, and it transforms you. Oh no, I've been furried! All for a good cause, my friend. With the super leaf, when you start running, the power meter will show up on the screen, and when it's full, you will run at a faster speed. But that's not all. When it's also full, you can jump and jump and jump again in the air for about six seconds, and then you start to fall. As you can see, this thing uses hunger pretty darn quickly, so you want to pace yourself early game. In addition, when you run out of flight time, you can still press space to slow your fall additionally, again and again, as many times as you want. Also, if you forget to slow your fall, Oh! I done got masted! You'll take damage, and it'll hurt. And if you take too much damage, as you can see, the power-up will fade. Even though Super Leaf Flight only lasts for about 6 seconds, you can extend it by bounding off of a surface. So if I'm still sprinting and I land on top of a tree, and then jump back off, it'll refresh it for me. You can also refresh it, even if you're not running, by simply jumping fast enough. Like this. Another new feature that you'll be using right away are alchemical flasks, formerly force flasks. These guys still retain their animal capturing properties. You can just click them, you can chuck them at them. However you want to catch them, they're just as caught. Get in the bottle. And then you could just put them in any pen, and they can't say jack crap about it. Now, of course, the purpose to capturing animals in Minecraft is because you want their stuff. Usually, you have to kill them to get their stuff. Except for sheep, who are nice enough to let you shear them. Thank you, sheep. You do not have to die. And look, he ate and he regrows skin. So that's all well and good. You could shear sheep, but what about the other guys? Well, let me just give it a try. Oh, that's right. You could shear cows. You can yank that skin right off their back and get yourself some... Sweet, sweet leather. Get out of my face, cow! Try to make a video here. But not only can you shear cows, you can also shear chickens and get feathers. And that's not all, you can also shear little pigs, too. That's right, I just got raw bacon from that pig. And I can turn that raw bacon into cooked bacon. Also, you guys are very loud! No need to worry, though. These guys aren't screwed forever. These guys will actually eat grass just like sheep will, and they'll regrow their skin. There he goes. That's a good cow. I'm gonna shear you again. It looks like it hurts them, but it's only causing mental pain. Ah, farming. The backbone of Minecraft. And time-consuming as all crap. So, you've got your animals and you've got your produce. But now, you need to farm. You need more wheat. You need more of them. You always need more. You're so greedy! But sitting here and watching this stuff grow is pretty darn boring. I guess I could go mining, but I probably need to eat or I'm gonna die. 
Well, that's where this guy comes in. The watering can. For only seven stone and one bucket, you can make this guy. And then, once you right-click it on the water source, it'll fill up and it'll have 100 uses. All you have to do is right-click it on something that needs to grow. And once every certain number of seconds, you can water that block and it'll grow. The time interval is by default 5 seconds, but it can be configured anywhere between 0 and 60 seconds in the config. The watering can may work on a few other things, so try it out. And of course, storage units are also from this mod. They're essentially stone chests that you can put down. You've got the same amount of space as a normal chest. So you can stick all your junk in there. But they also have a little access tab over here. You can set it to restricted so that automation doesn't do anything with this. You can also set it to closed so that other players can't touch your junk. While we're on the subject of storage, if you make yourself a chest, put some leather and wool around there, you can get yourself what's called an alchemist's satchel. Now these little guys are very neat. And they have a cute little 3D model to go with them, don't they? Oh, is they cute? The nice thing about these guys, you right click it, you can store up to 8 slots of things in it. But one of the best things about these guys is if you sneak, right click. You can actually recolor these guys. I'm going to go light blue. I'm going to name them Dart Pack because that's a good name. Now he's light blue and he's Dart Pack. But if you thought that's all these things were for, you, you're not very creative because seriously? Come on. If you put these things in the center of some leather and wool, you can actually upgrade them to 16 slots. And you can do that exactly one time for each pack. But both these storage units and packs can actually use a new item. Now I actually screwed the recipe up, but if I just rotate this around a few times, there we go, the item card recipe. I'm gonna pull out an item card. These things are pretty sweet. You just right click it and it opens a GUI that has 16 slots for things. Now this doesn't actually take real items. What it does is it takes phantom items. So if I take a stack of cobblestone, put a click on there, left click and left click that, It'll put a phantom item stack in here. This is a configuration card. So what you want to do is once you have your items, you right click them to change this little mode here. It adds little arrows to them. Click it once, it's yellow. Click it twice, it's blue. Click it again, it goes away. Now, but the yellow arrows and the blue arrows do something very effective. If you have an alchemist satchel that has an item card inside it, and it has something that is configured with a yellow arrow, it will actually automatically take that item into the pack. And the blue arrow means to restock from the pack. Just for some nice demonstration, I'm going to add iron ore and gold ore to this thing and, have, and ask it to take it in. I'm going to put it inside this pack that I named Junk Sucker. And now, if I break some of this cobblestone, it's actually going to go straight into the pack and not clutter my inventory right in there and this iron ore that I told it to take in it's gonna do the same thing so let's say I was I just came back from a long mining trip I've got ore I've got stone I come up to something like this inventory here and I just right click it and it actually drops everything into this because it's set to take it in so if you've got a mining pack and you set it to take in a bunch of junk I need to just right click it on your sorting chest or whatever else you have pops right in there but also if you right click it again and it doesn't have anything in here that it's set to restock it'll try and take out of that inventory and put it in here which is why I got two piece two stacks of cobblestone back and now if I want to build with this cobble since I have an extra stack in there I can do that and it's gonna keep restocking it for me as long as I have more cobble these cards can also be renamed and recolored Although, the colors are actually slightly different functions. And I click him down here until he turns light brown. We see that this now resembles a crafting table. If I put this in either a pack, and I put some cobblestone in there. So if I put that in there, it should be able to make three. And it made three, and there were five left over. Because that's how many it could make. And if you're wondering, it also works with these. Although with storage units, they only run the check about once every five or so seconds. This blue function is actually a forge of fire. And if we get, say, two different types of copper ingots, let's take the IC2 copper ingots, put them on here. We put this in a chest, and we put the IC2 copper and the thermal expansion copper. What it's going to do is it's actually going to transmute this thermal expansion copper 
into IC2 copper, like it just did. And there's still one more function. This is the red function. The red function actually destroys items. So if we put this guy in here, he's not going to destroy all that copper because he's still configured with copper. And goodbye, copper. Goodbye. Now, as your four-year-old nephew Jacob, or Jacob as he pronounces it, will surely tell you, any Minecraft session is always rife with copious amounts of tree punching. That's where these guys come in, the digging mitts. For just three pieces of cobblestone, three leather, and one iron ingot, you can get yourself a pair of digging mitts. And while these will work on dirt, they're primarily, actually, for breaking the crap out of leaves. Utterly destroying them instantaneously in a very wide area. And of course, it also works very effectively on the wood itself. And on grass. And on crops. Now, let's get down to the meat and potatoes of this mod. First, you're probably going to want to farm some stuff because you need to make six bookshelves. Once you have all six, just put them down like this. You can put whatever you want around it. For the last touches, I'm going to need a cauldron in one side. And then a crafting table square in the middle. And boom! We have the atelier. And this thing's going to help us to get everything else we need. First and foremost, this guy has... 18 slots in the middle here. We need to fill them all with empty flasks. And that's the only thing that goes in these. Second, we need to power this guy. We can't do jack right now. Let's get a vanilla furnace. Kill the chicken that gets in the way. Get out of here! We'll put some coal in it. And this furnace will start to burn the coal. Now, you can't actually smelt anything in this, or it won't count. But now, this guy up here is going to start to fill with energy. Slowly but surely. However, that's slow as crap, and I'm just going to put an energy cell under this guy, configure it to power out, and this guy's going to fill with energy now, because it can accept RF. Now that we have flasks and energy, we can finally start alchemy. Now, before one can deconstruct matter, one must understand matter. In Full Throttle Alchemist, most things have elements on them. While we're in the GUI of the Atelier, we can actually see them all. Let's take something basic that we have a lot of, like cobblestone. If we shift click this sucker in, it'll go right into the center of the GUI, and this little icon over here, this little arrow, lights up. Let's press him. What did it just do? It looks like it deconstructed one piece of cobblestone, took a little bit of energy, and it stored everything that was on that one piece of cobblestone in free flasks down here. So let's say we want the whole stack. Let's just hold shift and click this button. It'll slowly but surely deconstruct the entire stack and place everything into these flasks. Now these flasks can be used for a few things. If we decide to take one out of here, take this oxygen, we can see that it renders the amount it has in it, but if we right click it, we can actually drink a little bit of it. That's interesting. Every time we drink out of it, it'll take one gram and it'll give you one minute of the potion effect that's listed on it. Neat! But the primary use for these guys is once you deconstruct them, is step two, reconstruction. I'm going to go ahead and put some storage units next to this, because I like to do that. So take some leather and some paper, and I'm going to make some research vellums here. All right, got myself a few of these guys. Now these guys you can actually put in the top left slot of the atelier. And once you do that, when you start deconstructing things in this, It'll actually check through a list of available recipes that you could learn from this, and it found one, the cobblestone recipe. And now, as long as I have the ingredients that this lists on here, down here, which it's so kind enough to highlight for me, I could just press this, and I can actually create it. In fact, I can create more at a time if I want by holding shift and clicking it. And as you can see, I now no longer have enough oxygen to make more cobblestone, because I done drank it. Now, there's a limit to the amount of recipes we can get from cobblestone, and it looks like we got the cobblestone recipe again. That's unfortunate, but actually, it's not. Because we could take it, and we could shapelessly craft it back into a research vellum. Also, the atelier, upon the time that it determines what recipe it should create, actually checks adjacent inventories, such as this one, and excludes recipes that it finds. So now, by putting the cobblestone recipe in that chest, and trying again, I'll no longer get it. And in fact, I got the iron dust recipe. So now, if I get four grams of iron, I can make 
iron dust. Of course, it's going to take an awful lot of cobblestone. Now, as for exactly what things you need to get what recipes, I'm actually going to leave that up for you guys to find out. It shouldn't be that difficult to figure out. But if you're really having trouble with it, I've got a number of videos you could watch on my channel for it. For now, we're going to move on. Let's take a brief sidebar from Alchemy and talk about other types of vellums. As we can see here, we have not only research vellums, but armor, helmet, boot, sword, tool, bow, and fishing vellums. All with their respective different recipes. Now what do these things do? Well, let me take a tool vellum, and I'm going to come over to an enchanting table. This is a vanilla enchanting table, and we've got this thing configured to be at max power. For proof, let's put this diamond pickaxe in here. 30 is the level at the bottom of this. I don't have 30 levels. I only have 22. So, I can't use 30 levels to enchant this pickaxe. Now, let's take a tool vellum in here. Vellums only actually take one-tenth the amount of experience in levels to enchant as normal things would. However, they will pull from a pool of enchants from this particular thing, a tool, which includes pickaxe, shovel, and axe enchants, as if it were a golden version of that tool. So, for three levels, I've gotten efficiency four. And now I'm going to take this tool vellum, and I'm going to shapelessly craft it, onto this pickaxe to get efficiency 4 on this pickaxe. And it's really just that easy. And if we make another one, we got Silk Touch. Great, for 3 levels, and I'm going to also put that one on here, because these things can and will stack. And it will still adhere to maximum level restrictions, but it will not adhere to restrictions for, say, putting Silk Touch and Fortune on the same pick, which now becomes possible. It's useless, but it's possible. I'll also show off one armor vellum. So we'll make one of these. We'll see what we get. We got fire protection four. If we were to make a piece of iron armor, throw this on there, we now have a piece of iron armor with fire protection four. Neat. If you're a fan of Darkcraft and the Force Infuser, this is essentially the replacement system because I did not want to bring it back. I instead wanted to focus on this guy right here, the Atelier. Now, I went ahead and found myself the recipe for an alchemical furnace, and I'm going to transmute one. This guy, apart from looking pretty cool, it's just like a normal furnace, except that when you put fuel inside it, it immediately transmutes it down into energy, as you can see represented by this blue bar to the right. Now, if I put something like cobblestone in here, it'll start smelting it. It's rendering red because it's using a smelting recipe. However, if we were to discover the recipe for the grinding upgrade, and we then decided to place it in here. This now becomes a grinding furnace. We could then take iron ore, and instead of smelting it into ingots directly, it'll turn it into dust. Also, if we put some sort of inventory right next to this, it will automatically, by default, output to it. Which is good, because the alchemical furnace, when grinding something, has a chance for a bonus output. Iron also has a chance to give you tin. As you can see, we have gotten some tin dust. And of course, these dusts are on the ore dictionary, can be used for things like invar, and can be smelted into one ingot. But of course, if you don't want this to output, you could always restrict it. Or, if you're a stingy douche, you could also set it to closed. Now, if you want your grinding upgrade back, just shift right click, and it'll desocket it and pop it out into the world. And hopefully, it won't glitch into the wall and destroy itself. But it might! So, if we put the freezing upgrade in here, we can use any of the freezing recipes, which I don't necessarily remember off the top of my head, but I do know you can freeze cobblestone into stone. Very much like the blue. I like the blue so much, in fact, that if I click it with a light blue dye, it'll turn it light blue. You can dye any of these furnaces any of the 16 Minecraft colors by either right-clicking it with dye or shapelessly crafting it with dye if you want. And if you happen to have IC2 installed and you have painters, you can just right-click these guys to recolor them that way, too. And these same recoloring mechanics also apply to storage units. Grinding and freezing recipes, of course, can be found in any eye. But of course, if you'd rather manually grind your things, you can simply shapelessly craft the grinding upgrade onto a tool and get it that way. And now if I want to break this iron ore... I can just grind it up myself, manually, without the need to use fuel. This guy will also accept RF. 
While we're on the subject of upgrades, the area upgrade, which is also something you have to discover through alchemy, can only be applied to tools, but once it is, that tool will actually be applied in an area. It'll reach one block further than it normally would in every direction. It'll try to break the same block as the one you're breaking. This particular pickaxe also happens to have grinding on it, so it's grinding the cobblestone in the sand. Now it works slightly different for ore, because it will actually look a bit further for the ore. In an attempt to mine most of it out. Now, if you go ahead and put area on an axe, it actually functions a little bit differently. It'll try to break all the tree. It'll try to break all the wood. See? Look at that. It'll break all the logs that it can in a certain area. And also use a good chunk of durability, because the area upgrade does use durability for each block that it breaks. Just two more upgrades to go. We've got the storage unit upgrade. Now, these guys you can either shapelessly craft onto a storage unit, or you can just right-click a storage unit. It'll use one, and it'll extend its storage by one storage unit. So if I click it again, it goes to three storage units, and I click it again, which is the max size, it'll go to four storage units of space and one storage unit. And as a bonus, if a storage unit happens to be upgraded at least once, whenever you break it, it'll keep all of its inventory. And when you put it back down... There it is. If we shapelessly craft these onto a storage unit, it also upgrades it. And if we want to upgrade our packs, packs 16 slots, all we have to do is take an alchemy pack upgrade, which we also have to discover through alchemy, and just shapelessly craft it. It'll keep its inventory, and we can do that up to 40 slots. And you notice that the name turns blue at 24 slots, which means... But if this guy drops, he actually won't despawn or be destroyed. So your junk is safe. I mean, unless you fall into the void, then you're, then you're just super screwed. <laughs> now, if you remember Darkcraft, you'll remember this guy. It is now called the Alchemist Belt. Of course, it's recolorable and renameable. This thing can accept bacon. And it will automatically feed you when you get hungry. This thing can also accept elements. And it will try to automatically keep up to three minutes of the effect on you by using the elements. And if you can get your hands on an ender pack, and of course you have to discover the recipe for yourself, it's pretty easy to figure out. You can also put ender packs in here. And if there's an ender pack either on your hotbar or in your belt on your hotbar, then when you press the X key or whatever you have it bound to, it'll open your vanilla ender chest where you can store even more packs. Of course, the ender pack itself can be right-clicked to simply open it, but that's boring. On the subject of returning items, say hello to the Alchemist's Wrench, formerly known as the Force Wrench. This guy is a normal wrench. He can rotate things. Or, if you power it by pressing the Element Consumer hotkey and feeding it some sort of an element, you'll actually be able to use it to sneak right-click and pick up just about any tile entity. Of course, mod packs may differ. They may be using the blacklist, or they may be using a very strict whitelist, but that's up to them. On the subject of returning things, say hello to the magnet glove. After giving it some fuel, you can right-click on an empty block here, and it'll actually attempt to drag the ore toward you if it can. Oh, it'll look about 10 blocks deep, and it can't pull through empty space, but this could still be a rather helpful mining tool nonetheless. And of course, it does use some fuel. And of course, if you sneak right-click, the magnet glove goes into positive mode, and all loose items will actually fly toward you while this is on your hotbar. But of course, this will also be constantly using, thi using fuel, so be careful for how long you use it. But of course, what's full throttle alchemist without the watch? That's right, the Alchemist's Watch. You may not be a state alchemist, but at least you can make one and pretend and lie that you are. Now for this thing, you're also going to need to fuel it. And it's three modes, stop, haste, and off. When it's off, it's not using anything, and it's not doing anything. When it's in stop mode, it's actually not doing anything to entities. What it's doing is it's stopping the sun and allowing you to just keep it daytime, so that your solar panels and bees can constantly work. 
Or you can troll people and keep it nighttime on your server, and everyone will hate you. But of course, when you run out of energy in this thing, it'll stop working. Or you could switch this thing instead to haste mode and haste by about four additional times all nearby tile entities within a few blocks of you. Of course, the haste effect also works on block on block updates, so crops will go very quickly. And entities will also move around very, very quickly. So be careful if you go out at night and leave this thing on, because zombies will kill you. Don't you hate it when your base is right here and your friend's base is like umpty thousand blocks over there and you just want to get over there but you're too lazy to hoof it because it takes like 20 minutes. Well, all you have to do is get over there once and then make one of these suckers. The hearthstone. Of course, it requires fuel, but once it has fuel, all you have to do is sneak right click to set the location and you can name it home. Then, whenever you use this sucker, as long as you remain stationary, a cast bar will show up, and when it's done, it'll teleport you to the location it's saved, with a short cooldown of one minute. But once your cooldown is done, you can actually do something else with these. You can make a permanent waypoint by just dropping it, and it places this little hearth stone, this little hearthstone entity in the world. And then, whoever right-clicks it, and waits for the cast bar to finish, will be teleported to that location, and the hearthstone will stay where it is. And the cooldown does not apply when it's on the ground. So if you want to go back and forth between each other's base this way, you could do it pretty effectively. But keep in mind, if you move at all while it's casting, it'll cancel, and you won't teleport. Alright guys, as of recording this, we're down to the two last features. And this one is a returning one that you will probably remember. Say hello to bombs, specifically Zelda bombs. I'm going to place this sucker down and run the frick away. And it's going to blow stuff up. Now you may notice it pretty much just destroys blocks. It'll do that, but it will actually drop anything that's ore. So if I put one down here and I walk away, You'll see it destroyed everything, but it dropped this ore. And if I drop a few of them down here, ow! It did not destroy the ore because this ore is actually invincible. So you can mine pretty effectively this way if you really want to. However, I did add a new function. You can use absolutely any type of bow, and if you have arrows, of course, it'll just shoot the normal arrow. But, if you press the consumer hotkey, once, it'll switch the bow's mode. And if it switches it to bow it, bomb arrow mode, then any time you have both an arrow and a bomb in your inventory, it'll use up the arrow and the bomb, and it'll actually shoot a bomb arrow. That did three full hearts. I should back up. These are pretty dangerous. So as you can see, so this could be a pretty effective way of mining. However, be careful about using the magnet glove in it because these guys will actually home in on you. Ow! And you might have a bad time. Yep, dead. So that is probably not something you want to do. Now, on the subject of bow modes, if I press this again, it'll actually switch it to torch mode. Torch mode is pretty similar to bomb mode, except it uses a torch instead of a bomb. So you can shoot torches wherever you want, with any type of bow you want, as long as you have torches and arrows. And of course, last but certainly not least, I present to you the Force Sword. Now the recipe for this guy, you'll have to discover for yourself, of course, but... When you press the consumer hotkey and you put something inside it, you put neon, and you then right click it, it activates in all its deathly glory. While active, it'll constantly use the element that's inside it. And when you hit an entity, it'll use even more. It'll also make a really neat sound and kill them dead. When it's inactive, it only does plus one attack damage. 
but while active, it does plus 40 attack damage and has looting 3. Neon happens to be one of the most efficient things in this, so it's not going to use very much. However, you can use absolutely any element on this, and the color of the element actually determines the color of the blade. You see, phosphorus gives us a very nice, nice green effect. I really like this one, too. Gold or sulfur will give you a nice yellow sheen. Or if you want something more insidious, try nitrogen. For the good old Sith touch. Personally, I prefer platinum, although that's a little hard to get your hands on. So we just want to test this on some creepers. We can see that it one-shots them. And we want to try some zombies. It also one-shots them. Of course, depending on your config settings, zombies may or may not be much more dangerous with this mod. Occasionally, one may spawn with a force sword. If it does, make sure to keep yours out. You'll parry him, and if you don't, he'll kill you. Oh, also, don't do this. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three. Ah! Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you got a lot out of it. If you enjoyed it, please check out the website below. Check me out on Twitch, Patreon, and watch some of my other stuff. I've been playing uh, Mario Maker viewer levels. I've got Final Fantasy VI I've been playing for the first time, so watch one of those. Like, comment, and subscribe, and hope to see you around.